friends, Wayne Brown, the Ram Man here. Today we're going to talk about some uh, hydraulic principles of the braking system. And these engineers, they do these flow charts and this and that, and sometimes they make things very complicated. And my job is to make things uncomplicated. I guess it's just my background. My dad was a three-time engineer at A&M and he always made things too complicated. We've got our normal brake system right here, typically like an old Mopar right here. There's our four wheels, here's our master cylinder, there's our brake valve, these green squigglies are our rubber hoses, there, there, there. We're going to assume that this is a disc drum car. Left that out. Disc drum. We've got calipers here and we've got wheel cylinders there. Now, I tell people all the time, you know, modern methods like pressure bleeding and doing a one man with the bottle and the two and that's all fine and dandy, but nothing compares to an old school two person bleed. The fantastic thing about an old, after you're working on the brake system or restoring a car, the fantastic thing about a two-person bleed is one is operating this and one is here. And the person here can determine what kind of pressure you've got and what kind of flow you've got. Instantaneous. Seeing's believing. If you've just got spotty flow coming out of here, it's obvious that you've got a flow restriction. That's what you can't do with any other method. If it's blowing fluid right into that tube, right into your little bottle, like a water hose, mini water hose, hey, you're good to go. So, want you to remember that. It's really, really hard to beat a two-man bleed. The other thing I want people to realize is we get so used to it and accustomed to it, we don't even think about it. Now, when you go hop in your car, I didn't say start the car, get the motor running, but when you go hop in that vehicle that you drive every single day, and you step on that brake pedal a couple of times or once, you should have a rock hard pedal absolutely rock hard. There is no way that you can push that pedal down to the floor. Here's what most people don't understand by that simple result. You have a rock hard pedal. It means that you have complete 100% hydraulic integrity throughout the entire vehicle. You have no leaks anywhere. You have no leaks anywhere and coupled with you have no air in the lines. Air compresses, given a spongy pedal, loss of hydraulic integrity means that you have a leak. We'll carry this a little bit step further. So you can have leaks at multiple places here, 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 and here. Obviously, if you've got leaky wheel cylinders or leaky calipers, you can see visual results of that. There'll be some dripping or it'll be wet. You can use paper towels even on the, the real small ones at the hose junctions, what here. You will see evidence of it. Now, the only place that gets internal leaks where you can't see evidence of it is a master cylinder. You can get fluid blow by from the seals in the master cylinder. So it will fail to build up pressure because it's leaking past the seals. All I ever want, a master cylinder is nothing but a simple foot operated pump. Just think of the master cylinder as a foot operated pump. Brake valves in general, they're just distribution blocks or pressure differential valves or pressure reducers. I just want you to remember that in general, in general, brake valves are not the problem. 
Brake valves are not the problem. Very, very rarely. So, when you get down to some really rare things. So, we've got a rock hard pedal. That means we have complete 100% hydraulic integrity. No leaks throughout and nothing's given. So, and no air in the lines also. So, back to that air in the lines and getting a soft pedal. So, getting a little bit of a spongy pedal, softer pedal than normal, can actually result from a couple things. That indicates some give somewhere. Obviously, if you've got air in the lines, air compresses and it has give. Really, the only other place in a vehicle hydraulic brake system is the rubber lines. Rubber line, rubber line, and rubber line. If the rubber lines have lost integrity, they can balloon out a little bit under maximum pressure or high pressure. And it only takes just a little bit, I want you to think about it, just a little bitty bit to give a spongy pedal. So spongy pedals are usually air in the lines or your rubber lines have lost integrity. The other thing is, oftentimes, well, no, not oftentimes, calipers can get mounted upside down by mistake and you can never bleed those things. Remember that the bleeder screws always have to be at the top of something in order for the air to escape. On the early crashers, the pin caliper setups, sometimes they can get little pockets in there at the, at, at the top and the pin caliper Kelsey Hayes pin caliper used 70 through 74 on the C and B bodies and the E bodies. Oftentimes it's difficult to bleed those things out. They actually recommend in one of the old service bulletins that you just gravity bleed those things. Just keep your master cylinder full, open up the bleeders and just let it run for a few minutes or an hour or so. But they recommend that in a couple bulletins. So. There we go, my friends. That's some simple hydraulic uh, business. Now, let's get down to some problems. Let's say that we've got a pedal that won't hold pressure that goes to the floor. We need to find out where the problem is. Well, the fastest way to find out where the problem is is let's separate the two systems. Mopar master cylinder, remember, front port front port right here serves the rear brakes and the rear part serves the front brakes. So, real simple thing. So, we've got loss of pressure right here, which we know. We've got us a pedal that goes all the way to the floor. Well, if we take this front line off the master cylinder and we screw in a plug, 9 sixteenths by 20, all Mopar master cylinders are fronts and 9 sixteenths by 20 and the rear one is a half inch by 20. So, if we plug this front port of the master cylinder, we have disconnected the rear brakes from the system. If we plug the front port of the master cylinder, we have disconnected half of the system from the problem. Now we can check it out and we can see because all now we've got hooked up is just the front. We can hop in there and bleed or do whatever and do row our diagnostics and see what's going on. So if we hop back in there and we've got a rock hard pedal. We know that the problem's in the rear. It's pretty obvious. So there we go. We've wiped away half the variables. The other thing you can do is you can flip-flop those around and you can plug the rear port and all you're doing is you're just checking the back brake. So you can cut your possibilities down by half. Boom! Just like that. And of course you can carry this on a little bit further. Right back here at the brass block you can plug it or you could actually get you some uh, 3 8 by 24 plugs or some 7 16 you can actually plug it right 
right here. So it's easy to test the hydraulic system using some plugs and some simple com common sense so you can see what's going on. But don't forget that master cylinder trick. Saved you a lot of time and a lot of hassle. Now, I want to move on to something else. A lot of people, they talk about having too much brake pedal. I want to remind people and alert them to something. If you have a whole bunch of brake pedal, it almost always indicates a problem with the rear brakes. It almost always indicates a problem with the rear brakes. Either they're out of adjustment, the shoes are wore, or the drums are too big. You really, really need to mic the drums on a Mopar because remember now, drum mechanisms, they have to move a long way. Those little pins come out of the wheel cylinders which activate the springs, which move the shoes out. So, if you've got a problem with a lot of brake pedal travel. Once again, it almost always indicates a problem with the rear brakes and not the front brakes. I want you to think about this common sense. Disc brake system, the pads are running right there on the rotor. They're in any gap. They're actually touching but lightly. So just a little bit of movement squeezes those things down. So it almost is never a problem with the fronts. It's always a problem with the backs and that's what you've got to check out. Anyway, I hope these little tips and tricks uh, helped you out. It's helped me out a whole bunch of times and a whole bunch of people. Saved a lot of time, money, and grief. But a lot of it's real simple when you think about it. You can email us Wayne at theramman.com or info at theramman.com. Here's a phone number right there. Just remember, my friends, sure is nice to have a nice braking system. You can have you a whole bunch of go, but you need a whole bunch of woe, too. Uh, hope this helps out. God bless you. God bless America. We sure do need it. Thank you.